the inventory management portion of the system is going to vary depending on how your specific install is set up uh, because early on when your system was first being set up your administrator and your visco support representative uh, had a discussion and and made some decisions about the level of tracking in which you would track inventory um, there are two different ways you can track inventory either at the lot level meaning the more sophisticated way or at the venture level and you'll your adjustments of inventory will vary depending on how you do that and the other area that that could vary would be whether or not you're tracking packaging information um, meaning you know you're, you're buying and selling products and is it important to know how many units to a package or are you just buying and selling based on the units so just to to get started there's a couple of different setup options that need to be maintained before the um, the inventory adjustments make any sense and we'll do those in the system tables so there's two different tables that we're going to to modify here the first of which is inventory adjustment types so these are the different reasons why you would adjust inventory um, and they're going to keep track of a history of these so um, some of the common example here would be uh, if there's been damaged to a venture uh, just entering a lot information or packing packing list entry um, if there's repackaging that needs to be done spillage spoilage stock transfers yield adjustments really any reasons why you'd want to adjust inventory the other thing that you're going to set up and this is going to only apply if you are tracking packaging information would be package types so the different ways in which your product can be packaged whether it's 25 kg bags boxes cartons bundles anything like that you're gonna enter the different types of packaging that you use uh, here in the uh, the package type table in the system tables so once that's been established we're gonna go into the inventory menu and we're gonna select inventory adjustments um, there's a couple couple of different ways in which you can filter down what it is you want to adjust the the two most common ways are selecting specific ventures to adjust or selecting from entire containers but I will note at this point um, that if you're doing cycle counts what people will typically do is pull up by warehouse and then you would um, say proceed and that will return a list of all ventures within that warehouse and allow you to make adjustments to all ventures um, but but typically for you know damage situations or packing list entry you're just going to do it either by venture or per, by container so in my case I'm going to choose a specific container in which I want to adjust inventory and let's select this container number MSKU4656 I'll say proceed now I'm going to select the type of adjustment that I'm making so for purposes of this uh, demonstration let's just assume that I received the packing list in already I entered my packing list information when I received it from the supplier and now I've gone ahead and, and received the container into the warehouse and I've noticed that some of the product is damaged moldy for example so I'm gonna make an adjustment type here called damage I'm going to expand all lots within my venture now again here this is if you're tracking at the lot level you're gonna have a listing of, of all lots associated with this venture if you're just tracking at the venture level then you're making the adjustments right here in the venture you're not going into lots so um, by the way this is going to tell me the package type that has been entered when the packing list was entered in this case it's cartons and I have one lot in this venture my lot is lot number 1001 it's 180,000 pounds um, which is broken up into 180 cartons of a thousand pounds each now let's just say uh, that one of my cartons was damaged I'm going to change my carton number from 180 to 179 we're not going to change the weight of the carton at all we're going to leave it at that and I'll just say done before I do that um, this is actually fairly critical here is I have a way to enter my comments or my reasons as to why I'm making this adjustment in addition to just selecting the damage type this would be specific comments to to cover myself uh, in case someone were looking into why an adjustment was made so let's say um, mold seen on carton when container was opened at the warehouse and 
I'll say done. It's going to return a summary screen here, which it tells me that it's saved successfully. Um, it shows me my quantity after the adjustment was made. My total quantity was reduced to 179,000 pounds. Um, and if I want to make additional adjustments at this point because it didn't look quite right, I could do so. But I'll just say done. So that's the actual inventory adjustments and how they're handled. Um, let's just take a look at one example of how that's being tracked or how we can look back uh, at a history of, of changes to inventory. And let's do that through inventory management. I'm going to select um, that product that we were just working with. I want to see a list of all ventures in my warehouse for that product. I'll say proceed. And this is going to bring back to me a list of all ventures in all warehouses I have available for that product. I happen to know this was the venture that I just made the adjustment to. And I'm going to go into the packing list to see a history in the adjustment log of any changes that were made. Uh, I'm sorry, this is not the right venture. This was, it was this one, 179,000 pounds. I'll go into the packing list. I can see that my, my quantity is now 179,000. I'll go into my adjustment log and it'll show me the lot, the lot entry that was done and then the um, adjustment that we just made for the, the damaged carton is here. It shows that the user who made the adjustment, when the adjustment was made, the, d the adjustment type, um, the packaging, and then the adjustment that was actually made, which is in this case 180,000 uh, 180, to 179,000, and then my comments as to why I made that change. Now there's also reports uh, that you can generate to get a history of all adjustments made within a given month, for example. Um, and of course, we can always create custom reports as well for those that are looking to see um, you know, something other than, than the Visco standard reports. And what I would suggest is if you're interested in that, just contact your, your Visco administrator and they'll get you an estimate.